Hi, I'm Sci-Fi. So, I'm very late to this, because for whatever reason, uh, in my time zone, Blizzard decided to upload all of this stuff at 3 in the morning. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I woke up at 10.30. So, seven and a half hour delay, but here we are. Uh, everything for season one of Overwatch 2's, uh, new season format, as well as Kiriko. The game's newest support hero, which we'll get into in a bit in terms of like the controversy surrounding her being in the battle pass or being unlocked through the battle pass. Anyways, what was revealed today was basically a lot of stuff. How the battle pass system is going to be formatted, how it's going to work, uh, stuff we can expect in the season, the new hero Kiriko obviously in her kit. So we're just going to do a basic rundown of it. So this is the season one trailer video and I'm just going to play it in the background as I speak over it. And this is a very, I would say, insightful one. Because not only does it show off the content we can expect in the Battle Pass, but also, in a sense, sort of uh, tempers and uh, sets up our expectations. What I mean by that is that you can see right here, both Kiriko, or uh, sorry, Sojourn and Trigger Queen are free to play. Uh, they are immediately unlocked. Free Season 1 Instant Unlock. Uh, if I can get Sojourn. Free Season 1 Instant Unlock. Kiriko is going to be the only hero that is an instant unlock for those who have played Overwatch 1. So if you played Overwatch 1, you get Kiriko. If you own Overwatch 1 before Overwatch 2 comes out, you get Kiriko. That's how it's going to work. It's not going to be a situation where you have to go through all the passes or all the tiers to get to Kiriko. You just unlock her first thing. It's, it's, it's as if um, she's being free right off the bat, just like Junker Queen and Sojourn are. Here it says over 80 free... Uh, 80 free and premium rewards in the battle pass. There are 80 tiers, if I'm not mistaken. And when we get to it, Kiriko, if you have not played Overwatch 1, and you're a new person to Overwatch 2, you have to unlock Kiriko at tier 55. Which is a lot. I won't lie. It's it's a lot. But regardless, they wanted to reiterate that she is a free hero. You do not have to spend a single penny to unlock this hero. You got some epic skins, you got uh, like a Winston, um, like a camouflage skin, you got a Cassidy Pine Tree skin, I guess. Cosmetics uh, in the battle pass, as you can see. that These skins, we'll talk about them in a second, you got a, a Kitsune weapon charm. Looks like Cassidy's arm is a thumbs up. A pizza charm, arcade charm, Brigitte Emo, or a skin or whatever. Basically saying why you should upgrade to the premium uh, pass, which instantly unlocks Kiriko, another way to unlock uh, characters right off the bat. Cyber Pachimari Charm, Diva's new EDM skin, I believe this is a legendary skin, and more legendary skins. We got a Cyber... It's, it's basically Cyberpunk. And then you got Sojourn's, also Camouflage skin, I believe. Uh, Cyborg Farah. Th these aren't the official names, this is what I'm guessing the names are. Um, a Mercy skin, and then you got some more weapon charms. Then, the main... the big bad. <laughs> uh, uh, maybe that's the wrong term. The, uh... I don't know, the, the, the star of the show, in terms of cosmetics. Cyber Demon Genji. The first mythic skin in Overwatch history. Very customizable, and very cool looking. Uh, here's the customization here. As you can see, Genji... In the previous shot, with a little YouTube preview, you can see that he's red and blue. Then here, he's green, and, uh, green yellow, white. Next up, he has like a Florida Mayhem pa uh, color palette, like the light blue, pink, and black. And then you got the green one on, and you can also see that his patterns change. The only thing that isn't changing is the Cyber Demon face. The mask is changing, but this one isn't. The hair is also changing. Then another shot of this face. As you can see, the dragon visual effect also changes color. Same with the aura that surrounds Genji. Though I don't think that w that'll really matter in the long run, since you'll most likely see it as a red aura. And then, we got the announcement of Junkinstein's Revenge, Wrath of the Bride. Wrath of the Bride is something that I've been wanting them to do with Junkinstein's Revenge for so long. Every time they've, I guess, uh, promoted Junkinstein's Revenge, it's as if they're promoting a brand new, like, version of the story. I think the most the, the most recent one, before the Remix Anniversary event, um, Junkinstein for the fifth year of Overwatch, they made it seem like Brigida or, um, 
was it Brigitte? Yeah, I think they made it seem like Brigitte was this, like, monster hunter. And that just wasn't the case. And I was so disappointed. I was like, oh, are we actually getting something new? No. This time around, we are getting something new. And it seems like this time around, Sombra's uh, bride skin, the Junket Sign's bride skin, is going to be the main antagonist. With our four heroes being Ash, Junker Queen, Kiriko, and Sojourn. Which all have new skins, aside from Ash. This is the Ash skin we got a while ago. And these three are getting skins based on the event. Uh, so this skin caused a lot of confusion. Everyone thought this was Mercy. No, this is Kiriko. Um, I don't have any other, any other evidence to back up that this is Kiriko. Um, but I'm I'm pretty sure this is Kiriko. I, I don't think this is Mercy. New bundles weekly. The skins look great. Like that Echo skin, the Junkrat skin. Uh, let's see if we can get a close-up of it. Junkrat looks awfully weird, I'm not gonna lie. Lucio skin? Oh god. Uh, then you got some gameplay on Colosseo. Gameplay on mid- uh, no, this is the new map. Uh, this is the new Portugal map. There is a name for it, and I forgot about it. It's right here, I believe. Um, no. Uh, I forgot what the name is called. And when I remember it, it's going to be really butchered, so I'd like to apologize in advance for that. But this is the new map, the new push map. We got a teaser of this in the last major big event, which I believe was on, I want to say, August 16th, when they were doing that whole, like, big reveal as to the business bundle Overwatch 2. So he, this is some actual gameplay of it, rather than, like, a spectator overview of it. And this, this shot right here... Gives us another teaser at some of the skins coming to Overwatch 2. So we got Kiriko, Roadhog, Sojourn, Zenyatta, and then another hero in the background, all based on the uh, theme of Season 1, which I don't think I mentioned. I might have, I might have, but the season, the theme of Season 1 is Cyberpunk, which is why every hero here is a cyborg or a robot. Here it is, a better shot. So the heroes I mentioned before and Hanzo, as you can see, the skins look very nice. Roadhogs looks amazing, Sojourn looks she looks like a, a freaking cyborg detective. Um, I didn't even notice Widowmaker there, actually. But yeah, all these skins look very good. Uh, most rewarding Overwatch experience ever. Uh, we'll get into that a bit later. And just a reminder that it's free-to-play coming to October 4th. So that's the Season 1 trailer. Basically, just a bunch of cosmetics, what to expect from the Battle Pass, and what we can expect content-wise. So again, I'd say this is a very good, like, expectation setter. Uh, in terms of whether it tempers your expectations or surpasses your expectations. That's up for debate. So, on to the next bit of news, Kiriko, the newest support hero. Again, I'm going to let this play in the background, and I'll stop it to analyze stuff. For, okay, so a bit of a nitpick. They are playing on Kanazaka, and they're making it out as if uh, Kanazaka is like this brand new like control point game mode or something, or like this is an objective Kanazaka. That's just a nitpick, but yeah. Her primary fire. From what I've seen and heard, Kiriko's primary fire is a soft locking ability. So it's not like Moira's where you have to like, or it, it's sort of forgiving like Moira's, but it's kind of more so like Winston's primary fire where, again, it's soft locks. It's not a hardcore lock on like Moira's left click or a right click, sorry. It's just something you have to aim in their direction and they get healed. It won't spray as like, erratically as Moira's primary fire, but it does have it, it does also have indi indications whether you're missing or not. So you'll see in a second, uh, it's it's yellow right there indicating healing. And as you can see here, it indicates blue, indicating that you're missing your target. Another thing to note with this primary fire that I've heard is that its healing capabilities aren't as like intensive like Moira's. It's similar to the level of Zenyatta's Harmony Orb, I can't fact check that for obvious reasons. Um, so with Kiriko, it seems like this character is more so in line of just being a nuisance. That little ability you saw there and beforehand, it's a little blink slash teleport ability, similar to how Tracer uh, has something like that. But I'll get to when I get there. Then her kunai's. So something I want to get to um, is I believe a tweet from EVA. Yeah, so... EVA tweeted out that Kiriko's ability, or Kiriko's primary fire, does very low damage, but it's the first ever, like, Overwatch uh, primary fire that has three times headshot multiplier. 
every hero in the game besides widow has a two times multiplier or two and a half times multiplier kiriko's secondary uh kunai i think is does three times damage her knives do 40 damage per hit and headshots do 120 damage per hit there's no damage to wall off so it's not necessarily able to one shot you but it definitely is able to do a lot of damage especially you know if you're trying to hunt down a tracer you hit her in the head she's now at 30 health so kiriko the first hero to have this sort of i wouldn't say risk reward or maybe it is a risk reward type of style but she's the first hero that has a three times headshot multiplier but an insanely low damage output so you're you're going to try to hit or aim for the head with this character that's to say the least uh so don't expect to frag out on kiriko like you would on like say zen or uh I don't know, Baptiste. So here's the little dash ability. So from what I've read, she can dash towards her allies through walls and start healing them. There's no other like footage of her dashing through a wall. It was just that one shot. She can, again, dash through a wall to her teammate to heal them. We don't know how far the range is on this thing. Well, that's kind of insane. The first hero that has a sort of like escape ability or a dash slash teleport ability that can go through a wall. Reaper can't do that with Wraith or TP. Moira can't do that with her fade. Genji can't dash through walls, obviously. So this is this is kind of something. Kiriko might be like a bit uh, slippery to handle. And just like uh, just like Genji and Hanzo, she has a wall climb ability. Uh, I believe this is more so just to like remind everyone that she's related to the shimadas uh, and, and to the uh, to the regard that uh, her family in a sense trained the shimadas but that it, it's, it's it's okay i mean i wouldn't say this is like this wasn't really necessary but it's okay uh yes this ability uh i forgot i don't necessarily remember what key this is bound to but in this ability she cleanses her allies and makes them invulnerable and I believe there's a tweet by SK that said this lasts for 0.75 seconds. So as you can see, Reinhardt technically and should have died to all of the fire that Bastion and the Junker are putting into him, as well as the Junker Queen behind them. But he still lived. Same goes for Sojourn and Kiriko. They, they all should have died with the amount of fire they were taking, charging him like that. But no, because of that one ability, not only were they able to, uh, Kiriko was able to cleanse the anti-heal, but she was able to let her teammates live for a good amount of time. And then another instance of this ability, uh, again, invulnerability. This better shows it off in the other clip, but she uses it, and bam. It's like a immortality field, basically, but a bit more skillful. You need to actually time this. Uh, the projectile apparently is very slow compared to immortality field, uh, and only lasts for 0.75 seconds rather than the duration of the lamp, and it's like a one-time use in terms of the ability being on cooldown, right? So that was, that was a or a way to phrase it if you miss it if you miss the ability and it goes on cooldown you're screwed that's what i'm trying to say now we get an instance of her ultimate so what her ultimate does is that she the kitsune makes a path for her teammates it creates a bunch of gates that leads you in a straight path and in that said path it not only gives you a speed boost to your teammates but also gives them attack speed and reload speed and amped up damage or uh, sorry, I don't know about reload, reload speed, but attack speed, speed boost, and damage, uh, damage amplifier. So you see Doomfist using power block, and he melts immediately. So a very utility-based hero, and I feel like for players around my skill level, if it translates well into Overwatch 2 at least, which is plat, this this is going to be one of the more difficult heroes to learn. So here's Kiriko's kit again. Uh, Protection Suzu is the uh, invulnerability slash cleanse effect. Kunai's are what I talked about before, 40 damage on normal like body shots, 120 damage if you hit the second kunai on the head, swift step the tele uh, teleport directly to an ally even through walls, healing Ofuda, channeling a burst of healing, talisman that can seek target allies which is the primary fire, ultimate rush, the kitsune rush which we just talked about, and the wall climb. Uh, we got some screenshots of it here, uh, her ultimate, I, that's a really cool shot by the way, I really like this, they're all, they're all cool cinematic shots but uh, Kiriko using her ultimate. Uh, her TP looks like a normal uh, press release photo and her loving her fox friend. 
Uh, then this is the information season one. Again, just a brief summary. You're just going to run it, uh, run it down there real quick. Sojourn and Junker Queen, free season one instant unlock. Key to kill, also a free instant unlock if you played Overwatch 1 and you're an Overwatch 1 player. If not, you got to play in the battle pass to tier 55. Uh, reimagine multiplayer experience, 5v5 PvP, six new maps being Circuit Royale, Coliseo, Midtown, New Queen Street, the Portugal map, and the Rio map, uh, Paraiso, new mode push, which I kind of basically just touched on, crossplay and cross progression, competitive mode 2.0. They briefly mentioned competitive in the last major big announcement, and um, it's going to be basically like a think of like the Valorant system or like the league system, gold one, gold two, gold three, uh, stuff like that. Limited time event, Jungle Sands Revenge, Wrath of the Bride. We also mentioned that it should be a different story. If not, then what the hell? <laughs> Access to Overwatch 1 content, not 6v6, content, which is all 32 original heroes and classic maps and modes. Uh, new battle pass system, play the game, earn rewards, all new hero key to co, two epic skins, two seminars, one weapon charm, 15 additional rewards, premium content, Instant unlock the Kitty Co. 20% season XP boost, new mythic skin, 5 legendary skins, 1 epic skin, 56 additional rewards, and uh, weekly challenges for coins and weekly bundles. Another bit of information this is just more some housekeeping stuff now, all like the major, like, major miscellaneous uh, news. So, according to Boger, uh, well, not according to Boger, but Boger pointed this out if you don't have Kitty Co., you can still try her out in basically all the non-core uh, game modes. So you can play her in all, uh, you can play her in the practice range, custom game, no limits, mystery heroes, mystery deathmatch, and select other game modes as well, as well as some special event game modes. So she's not directly like, oh my God, you can't play this character ever. You just can't play her in the core game modes being control, push, escort, hybrid, and uh, the last one I'm forgetting, which, Actually, no, there's only four. The fifth one hasn't been announced yet. Another bit of miscellaneous news is that the last day of Overwatch 1 will be on the 2nd of October, according to Blizzard. Meaning, <laughs> there's going to be downtime. October 2nd may be the last day of Overwatch 1, but we still have to wait till October 4th. So October 3rd, we just have nothing to do. So get your games in, get whatever you want in on October 2nd, because it'll be gone the next day. Uh, another bit of miscellaneous information, the coin purchase options. These are the prices. So this is the new virtual currency that Blizzard was talking about. And these are the pricings of it. So for $5, you get 500 coins, $10, 1,000, $20, 2,200 coins with a 10% bonus, uh, $50, 5,700 with a 14% bonus, and $100, you get 11,600 coins with a 16% bonus. Next up, we got the Battle Pass Challenges. This is how you can unlock coins and uh, further progress yourself in the Battle Pass. So as you can see here, play or win 10 games gets you 5,000 experience points to the Battle Pass. Win 10 games cutest all rules, which you could probably just do hand in hand with each other. If you go flex here and you win 10 games, that's how you get like one tier up. Uh, to the victory goes a spoil. Again, win 20 games, win seven games in arcade. And the weekly challenges are just something you can get coins from. So again, you can grind things out. You don't need to spend a single penny to unlock stuff, but you know, if you want to speed it up, there's also that option. If you don't want to, and you want to be a free to play person only, you have your options here as well. Next, we got some of the premium content in the battle pass. If you get the premium battle pass, which every, what is it? Watch point pack founder or uh, watch point back holder gets all of this stuff immediately from my understanding. We, uh, we will get nine immediate rewards. Hidiko, EDM Diva, Weapon Spray, XP Boost, Moira Voice Line, Reaper Emote, Spray, and that. We can buy premium plus bonus tier. I don't know. It's it's a, it's it's a, it's something we don't know of too much technically just yet, but if you have the premium battle pass, this is what you get. This is the image of the battle pass. Uh, spray, I don't know what that is. Uh, like a highlight intro, I'm assuming. A voice line. Kitako, and you know, just... A bunch of stuff in the battle pass. Uh, again, play to earn stuff. This is the premium stuff. Uh, Genji's in the premium pass. Cross progression, new heroes, new maps. Oh, here, here's what it should be. The new map is called uh, Esperanca. Uh, again, I'm I'm probably butchering that. Uh, but yeah, just just a basic rundown of everything I've been saying. Uh, that's everything for me though. Uh, some Overwatch news in the amidst of Splatoon three stuff, but. Yeah, that's uh that's it for me.